Welcome to the circle. Circles symbolize a lot of things, and they're a basic building block for life. To understand circles, we need to understand triangles. First, we'll review the XY coordinate system. And I tried to make it fun. Well, it was fun for me. I love math. Drawing, music. Thanks for the perfect song, Louise. We'll draw a circle and then figure it out. Circles of angles. This noise in my head. Some things are easier done than And we'll find them. Understanding the unit circle helped me tremendously. I hope it can help you too. Hi, this is Crystal. Here's my point, or maybe your point. It is the origin, the place you start. To give it some reference, there is an x-axis going through it horizontally and a y-axis going through it vertically. Imagine you are that point. Let's make you a little bigger. Here is where you stand. Now imagine a grid around you. It goes from minus 5 to plus 5 on the x-axis, which is horizontal, and from minus 5 to plus 5 on the y-axis, which is vertical. The address of a point is called a coordinate. A coordinate is a pair of values, where the first number shows the horizontal distance to the left or the right along the x-axis, and the second value shows the vertical distance, down or up, on the y-axis. A coordinate is a set of two numbers, separated by a comma and written in parentheses. You are at open parenthesis, zero, comma, zero, close parenthesis. From now on, I'll just say the coordinate values without saying parentheses. Ah, warm sunshine. When you take one step to the right, not up or down, just one step horizontally, your coordinate is now one, comma, zero. Numbers to the right of the origin are positive. One more step to the right, more positively, the coordinate is 2, comma, 0. Numbers to the left of the origin are negative. If you walk three steps back from where you are, 2 minus 3, you are at the left of the origin at coordinate minus 1, comma, 0. So far, you're only moving horizontally along the x-axis. Whew! It's getting cold! Ah! Steps to the sun. When you walk left and right, you move along the x-axis. When you go up steps, you also climb. Then you are also changing your y-coordinate. After climbing the steps, you're closer to the sun, and that makes you happy. Not only did you move along the x-axis, but you also moved up the y-axis. You went over 3 along x, from minus 1 to 2, and up 3 on y, from 0 to 3. The coordinate is now 2, comma, 3. On the y-axis, numbers up from the origin are positive, and numbers down are negative. <laughs> nice arabesque, Leanne. But it can be dangerous doing arabesques on the top of steps. Here comes Mr. Wind. 
and he blows you off your step. As you bounce down, your y-coordinate decreases. Oh no, it's raining too. You're slipping and sliding and spinning as you move around the system. Your xy coordinates change. Now you bounce up, over and down, landing into soft, peaceful water. The rain stops, and here comes the sun again. The lovely rainbow! Oh, me lucky stars! What a big pot of gold! The xy coordinate system can be divided into four quadrants. The first quadrant is northeast of the origin, where x and y are both positive. In the second quadrant, northwest of the origin, x is negative and y is positive. In the third quadrant, southwest of the origin, x and y are both negative. In the fourth quadrant, southeast of the origin, x is positive and y is negative. Back at the origin, you're a point. You see another point and draw a line of sight to that point. If you continue to look around, as you draw points from your line of sight, you get a circle. A circle is a round shape where all points on the circle are the same distance from the center. You can think of a circle as a perimeter that encloses the area inside it. The perimeter distance around a circle is called a circumference. When you flatten the circumference into a straight line, you could more easily measure it and see it is a little over six units long. Where this circle is one unit wide and one unit tall. The line from the center to the edge is called a radius. Therefore, a radius is a line from the center of a circle to a point on the edge of a circle. If we were to extend the radius to another point of the circle, to go all the way across, we'd get a diameter. A diameter is a line that goes from one point on a circle to another and passes through the center. The diameter is represented by a variable called d. It's a variable because it can vary. Now let's label our grid with numbers. If the diameter is 1, then we can see that their circumference is a bit more than 3. The ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter is called pi. This is true for any circle, no matter how big or small it is. Pi is irrational which means it can't be expressed as a whole number or a fraction. Pi turns out to be about 3.14. The digits go on and on with no pattern. Pi with five decimal places is 3.14159, and pi with 15 decimal places is 3.14159265358979. Even though there isn't a repeating pattern for pi and decimals, there is a pattern to calculate it. Pi is 3 plus 4 over 2 times 3 times 4 minus 4 over 4 times 5 times 6 plus 4 over 6 times 7 times 8 minus 4 over 8 times 9 times 10 plus da da minus da da. It's always 4 over and the denominator then will just repeat the pattern. We can approximate pi with fractions. 22 over 7 yields 3.14 but the digits after 
those two decimal places are different. 355 over 113 is a closer fraction for approximating pi, accurate to six decimal places, 3.141592. Many have calculated pi out to lots and lots and lots of decimal places, and it just never repeats. Why is this ratio called pi? Pi is the Greek letter for p. Perimeter starts with a p. The area inside a circle can be calculated using pi r squared. Here we are, back to a point. The distance around the circle is called the circumference. It is abbreviated as c and is always equal to pi times the diameter. The diameter of a circle is the radius times 2. The radius of a circle is half the diameter, and the diameter is twice the radius. In our equation for circumference, we can substitute 2r for d. r means radius, and d means diameter. c is the circumference. 2 is constant because its value doesn't change. Two is always 2, no matter what anything else in the equation is. r is a variable because the radius changes, or varies, depending on how big the circle is. By convention, constants are displayed first, so our equation becomes c equals 2 pi r. The length of the perimeter, the circumference, is equal to 2 times pi times the radius of the circle. How many degrees are in a complete circle? A circle is 360 degrees. It is also 2 pi radians. Radian is the SI unit for measuring angles. If we divide 360 degrees by 2 pi, we find out that a radian is about 57.3 degrees. Since a circle ends where we start, one can say that a circle never ends. This point is 0. It's also 2 pi and 4 pi, and 6 pi, and 8 pi, and pi pi on. How many radians are in half a circle? What's 360 degrees divided by 2? It's 180 degrees. What's 2 pi divided by 2? It's pi. By convention, angles are measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Half of a half is a fourth, and a fourth of a circle is half of pi radians, so it's pi over 2 radians, and it's half of 180 degrees, so it's 90 degrees. Three quarters of a circle is one and a half times pi, which is generally expressed as 3 pi over 2 radians. This is also 270 degrees. The original radius we drew is actually at an angle of half of 90. Does it look like that? 45 degrees. Or how many radians is it? What's a fourth of pi? Pi over 4. It's pi over 4 radians. Halfway between pi over 2 and pi is 3 quarters of a pi. This is also 135 degrees. Here, x is negative, while y is still positive. To put 
The pi fractions in terms of fourths I'll label the angles we've already covered for pi to be over 4. 1 half of pi is 2 fourths of pi. 1 pi, what's 1? How many fourths is 1? 1 pi is 4 fourths of pi. 3 halves pi is 6 fourths pi. And 2 pi is 8 fourths pi. In the third quadrant, or southwest quadrant, halfway between 4 pi over 4 and 6 pi over 4 is 5 pi over 4. Or how many degrees? What's halfway between 180 and 270? 225. Here, both x and y are negative. What's halfway between 6 pi over 4 and 8 pi over 4? 7 pi over 4! This is the middle of the fourth quadrant and is also 315 degrees. We've gone all the way around a circle. Hopefully you're getting comfortable with pi radians instead of degrees. Degrees, totally unrelated, are also used to measure temperature. It's fall, and the trees are turning beautiful colors. It's 60 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and you also might hear the pitter-pat of rain. Let's focus on our radius at pi over 4, or 45 degrees. If we draw a vertical line from the point on the circle down to the x-axis, the height of that line is the y-coordinate. That tells us how far up on the y-axis we are. If we draw a line on the x-axis to the point under the point on the circle, the width of this line is the x-coordinate. What we end up with is a triangle, specifically a right triangle. A triangle is called a right triangle when one of the angles is 90 degrees, since a right angle is how many degrees? A right angle is 90 degrees. The little square where the right angle is indicates that angle is 90 degrees. Pythagoras was an ancient Greek mathematician. He discovered that a squared plus b squared equals c squared for right triangles. This equation is known as the Pythagorean theorem. a and b are the short sides of the triangle. c is the long side, which is also called the hypotenuse. Changing the variable names to our example, a and b, the short sides, are x and y. c, the hypotenuse, is our radius, r. For a circle, we can write the Pythagorean theorem as x squared plus y squared equals r squared. 45 degrees, or pi over 4, is a special place because the x and y coordinates are equal. So it's a good place to use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the actual values of x and y. Whenever you're solving an equation, it's a good idea to list the knowns. This means you should write down what you know. At this point, x equals y. Since this is a unit circle, the radius is 1, so r equals 1. 1 times 1, or 1 squared, is still 1, so this makes things a lot easier. Let's make some substitutions. x squared plus y squared equals 1. 
When you're trying to solve an equation with more than one variable, and you know how the variables relate to each other, get rid of the other variables by writing them in terms of the one you will solve for. Since x equals y, then y equals x. Therefore, x squared plus x squared equals 1. We can simplify this to be 2 x squared are 1. If we divide each side by 2, we get x squared equals 1 half. If we take the square root of each side, we get x equals the square root of 1 half. Square roots are hard to calculate. Let's change 1 half to a fraction. 1 half is also 0 0.5. So x is the square root of 0 0.5. Let's estimate it. 7 times 7 is 49. 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 is 0 0.49. So we know that the square root of 0 0.5 is a little more than the square root of 0 0.49. x is actually 0 0.707. Since y equals x, then y is also 0 0.707. Now remember, we're on a unit circle, so the biggest number we're going to have on the circle is 1, and the smallest number will be minus 1. With me so far? Great! You're doing great. Now that we've calculated what x and y are when the angle is 45 degrees, or pi over 4, using the Pythagorean theorem, let's put our grid back. This time, distances are labeled, so you can see that x and y indeed look correct. Trigonometry is the branch of mathematics that studies relationships between side lengths and angles of triangles. In Greek, tri means three, and trignon means three angles. The Greek word metron means measure. A closed shape with three angles is a triangle. Our pi over 4 and 45 degree angle is represented by a little arc across the angle. This is commonly labeled with the Greek letter theta. The sine of an angle is defined to be the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse or long side. For our triangle, this is the y-coordinate divided by the radius, or simply y over r. The cosine of an angle is defined to be the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. For our triangle, this is x over r. Another basic trigonometric function is tangent. This is the change in y over the change in x. In our example, this is y over x, which is also sine divided by cosine. Let's make a table to write down what we've calculated, or can observe. We'll list angle, sine, cosine, and tangent. This is where visualizing the unit circle is super helpful. Let's start with zero degrees. Look at our point on the circle. At zero degrees, what is the y-coordinate? It's zero. That's the sine. What's the x-coordinate? It's one. That's the cosine. The tangent is y over x. 0 over 1 is 0. 
At 45 degrees, or pi over 4, what's the y-coordinate? We figured out that this is 0 0.707, which is the sine. What's the x-coordinate? Here, x and y are equal, so x is also 0 0.707. That's the cosine. The tangent is y over x, and since they're both the same, the tangent at 45 degrees is 1. The slope of a line is the change in y over the change in x, so the tangent is also the slope. When our arc is a fourth of the circle, the angle is pi over 2, or 90 degrees. The sine is the y-coordinate, which is 1. The cosine is the x-coordinate, which is 0. The tangent of 90 degrees is 1 over 0. But math doesn't let you divide by 0. So the tangent of 90 degrees is undefined. At 3 pi over 4, or 135 degrees, which is 90 degrees plus 45 degrees, x is negative and y is still positive. The sine of 135 degrees is the same as the sine of 45 degrees, 0 0.707. In the second quadrant, x is negative. Its amplitude, or absolute value, is the same as x in the first quadrant. So the cosine is minus 0 0.707. The tangent is sine divided by cosine. Since the amplitude of both of the values is the same, but one of them is negative, then the tangent is minus 1. When we're halfway around the circle, we are on the x-axis. So the y-coordinate is 0. This is the sine. The x-coordinate, or cosine, is minus 1. Tangent is y over x. 0 over any number, well, except 0 because it's not defined, is 0. So the tangent is 0. In the third quadrant, at 5 pi over 4, which is 180 degrees plus 45 degrees, both x and y are negative. The sine is minus 0 0.707, and so is the cosine. Any number divided by the same number is 1. So the tangent here is also 1 just as we got for 45 degrees. A positive tangent means the direction of a line is from southwest to northeast. If we extend the radius from the third quadrant, we can see the slope is the same as the first quadrant. Three quarters of the way around the circle, at 3 pi over 2 radians, we can see that the value of y is minus 1. That's the sine. x is 0, which is the cosine. The tangent is minus 1 over 0. Again, <laughs> math can't divide by 0, so the tangent is undefined. In the fourth quadrant, at 7 pi over 4, the value of y is negative, and the value of x is positive. The angle in degrees is 270 degrees plus 45 degrees, which is also 360 degrees minus 45 degrees. The sine is minus 0 0.707, same as the third quadrant. And the cosine is 0 0.707, same as the first quadrant. The tangent is minus 1, which is the same tangent at 3 pi over 4. A negative tangent means the direction of a line is from northwest to southeast. 
360 degrees, or 2 pi, takes us back to zero. The sine is zero, the cosine is one, and the tangent is zero. A tangent of zero means there is no change in y as x changes, because the line is horizontal. y is always the same. There are charts to look up sine, cosine, and tangent for any angle. We calculated them so you can understand where they come from. We didn't talk about tangent much except to calculate it. In case you didn't pick it up, the slope of our radius represents the tangent. What if you know x and y but not the angle? You can use an inverse trigonometric function called arctangent to determine the angle. This might be abbreviated as arctan, atan, or simply atn. What if you know x and r but not the angle? What could you use to get the angle? Arc cosine. How about if you know y and r? You can use arc sine to get the angle. If you followed all this, <laughs> fantastic. That means you'll forever understand angles and trigonometric functions. It's not rocket science. When you can visualize it, though, it's really simple. What good does it do to know this? How can you apply this knowledge? Why might this be useful? Let's say you want to know how tall a tree is. Do you have to climb to the top and drop a line? <laughs> no, there is a much easier way. We can use the fact that triangles with the same angles have the same ratios between their side lengths. Ask a friend to stand between you and the tree with a pole. Then move until your line of sight to the top of the tree is also at the top of the pole. Mark your spot. x1 is the horizontal distance to the pole. x2 is the horizontal distance to the tree. y is the height to your eyeballs from the ground. y1 is the vertical height between your eye height and the pole top. So subtract your eyeball height from the pole height. y2, what we want to figure out, is the height of the tree minus the height to your eyeballs. The ratio between y2 and x2 is the same as the ratio between y1 and x1. Therefore, y2 equals y1 over x1 times x2. Once you calculate y2, add y, the height to your eyes, and you will know the height of the tree. You can use trigonometry to figure out the height of buildings and mountains to visualize sound waves and adjust parameters like pitch, volume, attack, and decay, how to make darts and figure out dimensions of fabric for sewing, to map terrains, mark boundaries, and surveying. Trigonometry is used in electronics and machining parts building bridges, roads, houses, and other construction. Sciences such as architecture, aviation, engineering, and physics. Trigonometry is also used in video games. You can use trigonometry to figure out where a bullet came from and the location of cars where they were before they collided in an accident. In pool, if you try to play it well, you can also use trigonometry to make that shot. Whether or not you think about it, trigonometry plays a part in a lot of what you do every day. We discussed points, lines, and the xy coordinate system. We drew a circle and showed how the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. We learned about trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, and tangent. We got comfortable with radians and degrees.
What prompted me to make this video was to provide background to teach how an analog clock application are made for access works. By knowing an angle and a radius, you can calculate XY coordinates of any point. As I was creating this tutorial, I saw a bigger purpose. I hope this helps you as much as it's helped me. The graphics for this video were drawn with, ready for it, Microsoft Access. Access is a database management application, not a graphics program. But if you can imagine it and simplify it, Access can do it. Thanks to Louise Goffin for her great circle song. Louise grew up with musical parents who taught her about music and encouraged her to develop her talent. And she did. It's no surprise that her music is brilliant and wonderful. Thanks, Michelle Johnson, also a great musician and performer, for putting me in touch with Louise. I'd also like to thank my mother for teaching me the unit circle at a young age. It's taken many years to realize that what I understand now is largely because she taught me so much about math. Thanks, Mom. Are you a teacher? Do you want to show this to your class? If you can't get to YouTube during class, you can download this lesson free. Email me, and I'll send you test questions, too. If you are looking for a math tutor or someone to help you with an access application, I'd love to hear from you. Visit my website, msaccessgurus.com, and send me a message. Connect to me. Let's build it together. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we will all get better.